O Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Financé par Immigration, Refugees et Citoyenneté Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue number 16. About Canada. The following dialogue is related to Unit 1, Overview of Canada, from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 1.1. Did you know this about Canada? 1.2. Founding Peoples of Canada. 1.3. Map of Canada. 1.4. Canada's Symbols In this dialogue, Sadia and Obasi meet at a post-arrival information session in a settlement agency in Winnipeg. They learn about Canadian history, government, geography, and Indigenous peoples. The settlement councillor, Obasi and his family, Sadia and her family, and other refugees are in a settlement orientation room in Winnipeg, Canada. A childminder takes Obasi's and Sadia's children into a childminding room until the session is over. The settlement counselor tells newcomers they can talk amongst themselves before the session starts. Hi, Sadia. Great to see you again. Hi, Obasi. I am so glad all of us made it to Canada. How is your wife, Lena, and the baby? Both of them are good now. Thank you for asking. That is great. Have you heard from Ali? I have not. He has gone to Montreal in a province called Quebec. We are learning about Canada today. The councillor is about to start. The settlement councillor starts the settlement orientation session. Hi, everyone. My name is Robin. I am a councillor at this settlement agency here in Winnipeg. We are funded by the Government of Canada. Welcome to Canada and today's session. Hello. Hello. Do you remember what we learned in the last session? About school registration and the government-funded services available to us. And we learned about the city and province we are in right now, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Great. Today, we are going to talk about Canadian history, government, and culture. But first, let us start with what you know. What can you tell me about Canada's geography? I know that Canada is very big. It is the second largest country on Earth in terms of land size. That is right. And it has many different landscapes like tall mountains, grassland plains, forests, lakes and rivers. But even though this country has a lot of land, there are not that many people living in Canada. That is a great start. Canada is also surrounded by three oceans, the Atlantic, Pacific, and the Arctic. Its southern border is shared with the United States. And you are right, there are a lot of wide open spaces in Canada, where very few or no people live. Canada is very big indeed. What is the capital city? Ottawa is the capital city. It is located between the provinces of Ontario and Quebec. Canada is made up of 10 provinces and three territories. They are all very different in terms of landscape and sometimes culture. Interesting. Now that we have talked about Canada's landscape, what can you tell me about the government of Canada? Hmm. I know that Canada has a prime minister not a president. But that is all I know. That is right. Canada is a democratic country with an elected House of Commons and an appointed Senate. The symbolic head of state is the King or Queen of Canada, who is the same as the King or Queen of the United Kingdom. But the King or Queen does not have power in government. So if the King of Canada is the King of other English-speaking countries, why do people speak French in Canada, too? Well, some parts of Canada used to be colonies of the United Kingdom, 
and some were colonies of France, where they spoke French. That is why Canada has two official languages, English and French. For example, Quebec is officially a French-speaking province. In the province of New Brunswick, the official languages are French and English. The majority of people in other provinces and territories speak English. But there are French-speaking communities throughout Canada as well. Speaking of languages, do you know how many other languages are spoken in Canada other than French and English? Maybe five? Spanish, Chinese, Arabic, and uh, I do not know what else. Actually, over 200 languages are spoken in Canada. These include indigenous languages, as well as the languages of the many immigrants who have settled in Canada. Wow! How many people in Canada come from other places? One out of every five people in Canada is born outside of the country. Canada looks very diverse today because in recent history, immigration has played a central role in building Canadian society. Newcomers bring their talents to Canada and that helps Canada's success. They work, pay taxes, make friendships, and are involved in their communities. Today, Canada is diverse in age, race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, abilities, and economic status. When thinking about diversity, it is important to remember that Indigenous peoples were the first to live on the land that is now Canada. For example, take the name Canada itself. Do you know where this word comes from or what it means? No. I did not know it had a meaning. The name Canada originally comes from the Huron-Iroquois word Kanata. It means safe place, village, or settlement. This is because indigenous peoples have lived and thrived on the land that is now Canada long before the arrival of the first European settlers. They had their own economies, languages, and cultures for centuries, long before written and even oral history. So, a long time ago, only indigenous people lived on this land? Yes, that is correct. There are three founding groups of what we now call Canada. What are the three groups? Is it the indigenous, French, and British? That is correct. How are these groups different from each other? To explain that, we can start by looking at the indigenous groups. There are three distinct groups of indigenous peoples recognized in Canada. First Nations, the Inuit, and the Métis peoples. Let me start with number one, the First Nations. There are hundreds of different First Nations and more than 60 First Nation languages today. First Nations peoples live in towns and cities across Canada. About half live on lands set aside for their use called reserves. Many others live in self-governing regions called nations where they make decisions on local issues. The second group of indigenous peoples is called the Inuit. Inuit typically live in small communities across the northern part of Canada. Inuit means people in their language, Inuktitut. Inuit knowledge of the land, sea, and wildlife let them thrive in the harsh Arctic environment. Today, Inuit still hunt and fish for foods such as seal, whale, and caribou, to feed their communities. The third group of indigenous peoples is called the Métis. The Métis were originally children of European fur traders and First Nations women. Métis became a distinct people with their own culture and traditions in communities along fur trade routes during the early 1600s of the Common Era. This is when European settlers began to live and form colonies in what is now Canada. Today, Métis people live across Canada, especially in Ontario and the Western provinces. Today, about 5% of people in Canada are Indigenous peoples. I have a question. What exactly is a colony? Colonies are the result of colonization. 
This means settling and taking ownership of land that is already occupied by other peoples. Indigenous nations in Canada were colonized by European settlers beginning in the 1600s. French settlers came between 1600 and 1700 Common Era. Present-day French Canadians include Acadians, who are descendants of French settlers in what is now called the Atlantic Region of Canada. The Atlantic Region includes the provinces of New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland, and Labrador. Today, Acadian culture is flourishing and is a lively part of French-speaking Canada. Quebecers are the people of Quebec. They maintain a unique identity, culture, and language. And, as I said before, there are French speakers living in all provinces across Canada. There are also present-day English Canadians, who are descendants of the English, Welsh, Scottish, and Irish settlers who came to Canada between 1600 and 1900 Common Era. What was it like for the Indigenous peoples when the European settlers arrived? Many Indigenous nations were welcoming towards the Europeans. They traded peacefully with them. They taught the Europeans the skills they needed to survive Canada's harsh winters. Many of the early agreements were made in the spirit of peace and friendship, to allow trade and make land available for settlement. Treaties are agreements made between Indigenous peoples and the Government of Canada. Some First Nations gave up large areas of land in exchange for promises of schools, annual payments, and certain rights to hunt and fish. Indigenous peoples and the government did not always understand treaties in the same way. Canada's actions in honoring its promises to Indigenous peoples remains controversial to this day. Learning more about the history of Indigenous peoples in Canada will help you better understand them today. So what has the Canadian government done to improve the relationship with Indigenous peoples? Canadian law recognizes the rights of Indigenous peoples. These include treaty rights, hunting and fishing rights, land rights, and the right of self-government. In 2008, the government created a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. This group released a report on ways to heal and create respectful relationships between Indigenous peoples, the government, and all Canadians. This is called reconciliation and is an ongoing process. I see. Canada is committed to strengthening the relationship with Indigenous peoples based on recognition, respect, cooperation, and partnership. Is it only the government's responsibility to reconcile with Indigenous peoples? The government plays a big role, but they cannot do it alone. Everyone in Canada plays a part in the reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. You can do your part by learning more about the history of Indigenous peoples in Canada, respecting Indigenous peoples and their traditions, supporting Indigenous artists and businesses, and attending local Indigenous events. What do you think about this information? I did not realize that I would have a role to play in reconciliation. That seems like an important responsibility. That is a great observation. Okay, that ends the session for today. I hope you're more familiar with Canada now. End of Dialogue Unit